As the blood moon hovered in the night sky, Chase, ears flowing in the wind, drove as fast as he could to reach his destination. Sky was quiet in the back, a lot of things going through her mind. This night. It's a complete nightmare. She said aloud. I keep hoping, hoping that I'll wake up and all of us will be back at the lookout. That rubble will still be with us. Although Chase had said that he wanted to talk to her about something, he couldn't bring himself to. Too many thoughts were running through his mind as well. Would Ryder be okay? Would the others be safe? Would he be able to save anyone at all? And most importantly, would he be able to protect Sky? He was working up the courage to say something until Sky continued. And I can't help but wonder, which one of us will be next? She said. Her last statement really hit Chase hard. He didn't know how to respond to that. How could he truly assure her that everything would be alright? Sky, the thought of losing you. He swallowed. Scares me. That's not to say that I don't care about the others, but I really care about you. Chase said. Aw Chase, that's so sweet. I care about you too replied Sky, completely oblivious to what he truly meant. Chase huffed, continuing to focus on the road. Sky, what I wanted to talk to you about. I really care about you. Chase emphasized. Chase, you said that I'll read Dash. I care about you more than myself he unintentionally interrupted. Sky was now finally starting to get the picture of what he was saying. Chase's face was flushed red as he took a deep breath and continued. I think of you every day. I worry myself to death whenever you're in trouble. I kept your old bathing cap just because it smells like you. Wait. Ignore that last part. The best part of my days are the times we get to hang out. I love when we play Pup Pup Boogie together. I love when we go on missions and me and you pair up. I love your smile and laugh and the way you do flips. I love everything about you Sky. Chase finished, out of breath as Mr. Porter's house began to come into view. Sky sat there a little dumbfounded. Because I love you. Chase said as he gained his breath back. Chase's last statement caused Skye's eyes to shoot open as memories came flooding back to her. Sky, Sky, I'm glad you're okay. Sky, you're safe. And not that I was worried or anything. Ryder, she made it. Sky made it. Be careful Sky. Chase was worried about you Sky. These memories caused realization to set on Sky. Chase. She thought, at a loss for words. In her mind she had never really considered anyone on her team to be more than just a friend, but for some reason, Chase confessing these feelings for her made her feel something towards him. Chase nervously waited for her to say something. Anything. Instead he was greeted by a tight hug from behind him. Sky embraced him tightly, small drops of tears hanging onto her eyes. Chase's cheeks bursted with red color again but he quickly relaxed himself. 
Sky ended the embrace as the two pulled into Mr. Porter's yard and stared at the house before them. For some strange reason, many crows were perched atop the house. The birds seemed to watch the two as they slowly stepped out of the cruiser. As the two pups looked from the outside, they couldn't help but notice that no lights were on in the inside. I don't think this is a good sign uttered a shivering sky. Rough. Heat vision goggles. Chase commanded as the green visor on his spy helmet dropped down over his eyes. He scanned the house for any heat signatures that he could find. There, he said as he came across to within the house. Sky, you should stay out here he told her with a worried look on his face. You'll be safer outside. Sky was about to argue, but decided against it. Even though he didn't want her to go in the house with him, she didn't want him to go in alone. But Chase, what about you? She said. Don't worry about me. He said with a serious expression. I'll protect you. I promise. He turned to walk off but was stopped by Sky. He turned to face her only to be met by a kiss. As Sky pulled away, Chase had a dazed expression with cheeks so red that one would think the pup had a high fever. Sky wanted to giggle at this but didn't because of the seriousness of the situation. Be careful Chase she said to him snapping him out of his heavenly moment. Chase furiously shook his head coming back to reality. He looked up to Sky and smiled sweetly and nodded. I will. He walked up to the house door and stood on his hind legs as he turned the knob. It's unlocked. As he opened the door, all that light ahead of him was darkness rough night vision goggles katie slowly walked down the dark hallway she couldn't figure out what in the world rubble would be doing in her house this late at night and why he and callie wanted to surprise her none of this made sense to her at all i must still be dreaming she thought to herself as she felt her way through the pitch black hallway. Rubble can you or Callie at least turn on the light? No answer was heard. Rubble, she called out to the voice again. Still no answer was heard. Katie huffed and continued to feel her way through the dark until the walls expanded and she was unknowingly in the center of a spacious room. She continued to walk until she bumped her head into something hanging from the ceiling and slipped and fell to the floor. What in the world? She asked, while rubbing her behind. What did I slip in? It's so wet. She felt all over her now drenched pajamas. She began to smell something strange. Rubble are you still there? Can you turn on the lights? Katie asked. In response a few seconds later a dim light had flicked on. Katie's eyes grew wide as she stared at her PJs covered in a dark red substance. I is this. She looked to the floor and saw that what she had slipped in was a puddle of the red substance. Her breathing started to become shallow seconds before a drop of the red substance fell from above her. She slowly looked up. Hovering above her was Callie, hanging from the chandelier by a worn-out leash tied around her neck. 
Her eyes were wide open and she was missing the lower half of her body. No. 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 Callie, she wept. She didn't know how or why this happened but she just wept. Kagataiya. You're next, said the voice as its pitch deepened with the last word. Katie didn't know what else to do except run. She made a dash for the front door and tried to exit. The knob would not budge. Help. Somebody. She desperately began to pound on the door with her hands and fists. From a shadowy corner, the silhouette of a bulldog began to walk forward and changed shape into a pirate wielding a sharp hook. Katie screamed and banged louder as he began to close in on her. He raised his bloody hook. K-R-S-S-S-H-T a green recycling truck crashed through the wall and windows, screeching on brakes as it pulled up by Katie. Rocky looked up from his now scuffed and heavily dented truck to see the pirate picking himself off of the floor a few feet away. He studied the features of the scurvy man and especially noted the red pupil less eye and bloody hook and beard. Rocky's eyes widened in shock. I is that. Blood beard, he asked as courage began to fade away. He looked towards the ceiling to see the horrible sight of Callie dangling. No he uttered out. Callie. I was too late to save them both. He thought to himself trying to blink back the tears that were forming. Snapping out of his trance, he turned towards Katie. Katie, hop on. The blonde didn't waste a second as she stepped onto the arms of the recycling truck and climbed up to Rocky's seat crouching behind it. Rocky hit the gas and swung the truck around in a U-turn, heading out of the same entrance that he had made. Katie looked behind her to see if they were being followed by the ghost pirate. Fortunately, there wasn't a trace of him behind then. As Katie stared at her house shrinking in the distance, she faced forward covering her eyes in tears. Rocky, Callie, she she was dash Katie cut herself off as she cried. Why? 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 Rocky couldn't bear to see her cry. He knew the feeling of losing someone all too well. He knew there was nothing he could say to make her feel better. He tapped his pub tag. Guys. I have Katie with me. I was able to save her. Rocky said, speaking through his tag in a shaky voice. Chase exhaled in relief as he stopped walking through the dark house for a moment. That's great news. How are Katie and Callie? He asked. Rocky hesitated as he lowered his head in shame. I, only have Katie with me he answered. So, where's Callie? Sky asked curious. There was a moment of silence before the other four pups could hear Katie's now loud cries. They were able to place the pieces together. Has, any pup else found one of the others? asked Zuma. Me and Ma's Hall still haven't reached Captain Turbot's yet. Me and Sky are at the porters now. I'm searching for two heat signatures as we speak answered Chase. And, no one's heard word from Ryder yet, asked Marshall. 
The others were all silent for a second. No. Responded Chase. I'm going to head back to the lookout to check on High Dash. No. Rocky was cut off by Chase. You need to get Katie out of town. You don't know what you'll find there said the shepherd. Chase. Rocky looked horrified. I'm sorry Rocky, but it's just as I said earlier. We have to complete the mission. A tear could be spotted rolling down from his night vision goggles. The longer Katie is in town, the longer she could be in danger. I understand. Replied Rocky. I'll take Katie to Foggy Waiya. Rocky jerked his steering wheel as he swerved out the way of the pirate who had appeared right in front of him. Katie screamed. Rocky. What's going on? Chase called over the speaker. The ghost pirate found us, he replied back. Seconds passed and there was no response back to Rocky from the other end. Chase. Still no response was heard. Sky. Zuma. Marshall. He looked down at his pup tag for a second to see that it was no longer lit. He furiously tapped it to try and get it to activate, but it was no use. Why? Why is this happening? He yelled as he slammed his paw on the dashboard of his truck. Rocky. Rocky answer me. Chase yelled through his pup tag. The only response he received was a few seconds of eerie heavy breathing before it stopped. Rocky. Come on dude answer us. Are you alright? The other three called out to the mixed breed as well. Their worry only ensued as the silence continued. Rocky laid on the gas not letting up as he kept watch behind him. His heart felt like it was about to jump out of his chest. He looked back and forth, searching for where the ghost pirate might jump out next with Katie searching as well despite her being short on breath from screaming. The ruby red moon that seemed to follow them looked as if it was taunting them. He rushed past City Hall, still keeping eyes peeled behind him. As he looked back to the front, Bloodbeard stood in his path once more. Gyaha! He screamed, once again swerving around the ghost pirate. This time however the speed and force of the swerve caused the recycling truck to flip over. Katie screamed as the motions threw her off the truck before the side of it slammed onto the road, creating a loud screeching noise. Rocky's truck, still skidding on its side, crashed into a street light pole. The impact knocked him unconscious.